Hi there, my name's Diane. Um, I garden here in the northeast of England, and today I'm going to be showing you how um, I sow seeds in autumn um, for plants that will flower next year. So, what I'm going to use this year, see how this works, is instead of buying purpose made seed trays um, I'm going to use these plastic containers that had um, family size salads in them and we eat loads so I'll probably go through one of these a day and I thought you know if I drill some holes in the bottom so I've drilled six holes in the bottom of each one and then it makes a little seed tray with a cloche and I think that's going to work perfectly um, and I don't know whether you have the same problem as I do, so I set my seeds away um, and then I usually put the little sort of white sticks in, the markers, um, and they always, either the baby plays with them, takes them out, moves them around. Anyway, I lose track of which seeds are in which container. And once the label's gone, that's it. I have no idea what they are. So um, in a very blue Peter type of way, I've put little white uh, pieces of paper with the name on, stuck on the outside of the container, right at the top. So that when I put it in the drip tray and put water in, the paper won't get wet. <laughs> so um, I think this is going to work really well because they're nice and deep and they're a nice size. So what you'll notice about all the seeds that I'm going to show you that I'm planting today um, is that they're all white and that's because I am creating um, a, an all white garden in an area of the garden that um, I was going to put the greenhouse in and then changed my mind. Um, so once I changed my mind, I dug out all the border anyway and I thought, right, it's a good opportunity to do something different. I'd always fancied a white garden. Um, it's a very small space, but um, so I bought white bulbs and I bought an array of white perennials and biennials. So the first one I bought was Antorinum White Admiral. These are snapdragons. And then I've got an Antorinum Apple Blossom. I've bought some Ami Magus uh, Bishop's Flower. And that was really, really tall. I love it. Um, because my garden has um, an awful lot of trees in it. It's very shady. And Ami Magus. Um, really sort of anything white pops out. So I've bought three packets of Ami Majors. And you can sow these, all of these um, seeds in the spring, but um, I just think it's a really nice thing to do to sow some seeds in the autumn. You can't, you can't sow all seeds in the autumn, but these ones you can. Um, and it just sort of keeps the gardening season going and the interest when things are sort of dying down and maybe your favourite garden programme's finished and it's really exciting to watch little seedlings come, come up. And once they've germinated and they're all up, what you do then is you prick them out and you put them into um, sort of potting on little modules um, and then they'll grow to a certain size and then once the temperature drops below a certain degree they just go dormant and they sit like that all winter and as long as you don't have them sitting in wet um, they'll be fine and then in the spring you pop them up into nine centimeter individual little pots and they just romp away and by the time it gets to May, June here in the UK, up in the Northeast. Um, they're ready and you can put them out in the garden. So that's Ami Majors, Bishop's Flower. Um, that's my Vabascum Snowy Spires. Let's see, I bought a few packets of that. Um, 
I also bought a packet of Argentine forget me not little snow white but when I read the packet that doesn't say that you can sow it indoors in the autumn but it says can be sown directly outdoors August to October for earlier short flowers the following year pinch out the growing tips to encourage bushy growth um, and I have heard that forget me not don't like um, to be moved, they don't like their roots disturbed, whereas the rest of these are okay. I've bought some Lupin's Noble Maiden, um, that's my Vivascum, Vivascum, and then I've got my white fox gloves, my Digitalis. Right, so, um, what I like to do with all of my seeds that I grow is um, I don't use any seed compost. I used to, um, and I always had that irritating problem of damping off where the seeds germinate, they look lovely and healthy, and then you go in one day and they've got this sort of like white bloom and they all sort of go limp and bend over and it's called damping off. I don't know why, what causes it, but it just spreads through your seeds and, and you lose them all. So I started using vermiculite and I would mix it in, in larger and larger qual quantities as the years progressed. And the more vermiculite I put in, the better results I got. And then I, I can't remember whether I read it or heard someone, they were saying, you know, seeds don't need any nutrition. They just need a nice, medium to grow the roots in and then you pop them up into a seedling compost or a multi-purpose compost so one year i just tried them all in pure vermiculite and i had no damping off it was brilliant um, and ever since then every year i grow my seedlings on in um I germinate my seeds rather in pure vermiculite um so uh, the other thing that I like to do is I like to put all my seed trays into one large drip tray and then I water from the bottom up so that it doesn't disturb the seeds once they're on. I'll show you. Um, so actually these were from Ikea and they're, um, you, they're selling them only £3 each and you put shoe racks on them and the, the sort of drip trays. But I thought, well, they're nice size, so I bought them. Um, right, so this is the vermiculite. I'm not advertising anybody's vermiculite in particular, there. I think they'll all be much of a muchness. So, um, I'll take it over. You can see how fine that one is. You can get fine vermiculite, and then you can get this much coarser vermiculite. This is some of earlier this year. Um, that's the beauty of vermiculite as well. You can reuse it. You pull the seedlings out, put them in your potting compost and that, and it leaves the vermiculite behind and it's just nice and dry um, so you can reuse it. And there'll be lots of people screaming, no, no, disease, but um, I've used it um, again the next year or the same year and it's fine. Sometimes what happens is when you water this, um, and put your new seeds in you might find you get a rogue seed coming up um something that didn't germinate the first time round will now germinate so anyway um we'll get started so let's see what's the first one white fox gloves right so you just tip your vermiculite in all of these seeds um, in my conservatory here so I can see them and everybody else can see them on a daily basis. Right, now with foxgloves it's 
says, uh, saw seed finally on the surface of moist seed compost and firm down. Do not cover. So some seeds you will cover them and others you won't, right? So it needs to be moist. So you just pour your water into your drip tray. And that vermiculite will soak the water up. Foxglove seeds are so fine, incredibly fine. I'll show you. That's them. Just sprinkle them on. I have actually got about a hundred foxgloves already in the greenhouse, but um I lost the labels. So all these white ones, um, I'll go in my, my white garden and what's left over, I'll go in the main garden. It's always room for foxgloves. Right, and I don't know whether you can see it's changing colour there. So you, you can see how it's soaking up that water. And then you just put a little cloche on the top. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Right, the next one, Antrinum Apple Blossom. I think this is a genius idea, putting the uh, labels on the outside. Because what happens when you put um, the labels on the inside, even if you bought the, the correct marker pens, it gets very hot and humid inside the cloche. So um, I've never found a pen yet that um, where you can read the writing after about a month. And this conservatory is east facing. So it gets the morning sun um, and it stays warm and sunny until about midday and then um, particularly over that side of the conservatory it goes into shade and that's where I'm going to put all these seeds. I'm going to put them on the shady side of the conservatory because you want it nice and bright for seeds but you don't want them baking in the sun. Right, so this is Ant Ryan and White Admiral. And the good thing is, now that I've got the labels actually stuck to the bottom of the, the seed tray, they'll never get mixed up. And earlier this year, um, I had all the labels on the little sort of white plastic, um, like that. I had these stuck in and I had them all over the conservatory and um, I went to make a cup of tea and when I came back the baby had collected all of the, the sticks up. <laughs> I just had loads of trays of vermiculite no clue what was which one was which right Ami Magus now Ami Magus is a really tall plant and usually the taller the plant the deeper you need your seed compost um, Ami Magus can grow about four or five foot, but that's a nice, um, a nice depth there. As I say, as soon as they germinate, um, then I prick them out into much deeper pots. Right, so where's my Ami Magus? There we go. And I've 
quarter of your packets of each so just as a security blanket so i can sew these and if anything happens to them um i've got another packet and i'll sew them in the spring got some more water in there I love getting up in the morning when you come in the conservatory when you've got trays of seeds and young plants there's just such a lovely smell so i very rarely directly sow any seeds in my garden um, because if you've seen any of my other videos you'll see that my borders are jam-packed and it takes me ages to weed in the autumn so if i put seeds down I would just disturb them more and if they germinate and they were there in the spring you've then got a lot of new weeds to contend with and i might not recognize the leaf of the new plant um, and pull them up so i like to to know where everything is right so this is the verbascum lid there and then what else have i got lupins white lupins right i need another lupin like a hole in the head but the i think i must have a couple of hundred lupins in the greenhouse but i think they're all reds and yellows are lovely but i wouldn't mind a nice white one so this one's called noble maiden what does this say ah oh, right it says here soak seeds for 48 hours before sowing under cover okay so i'm just gonna go and get a little container and i shall soak these seeds and then put them in that one tomorrow right a little jar of water I must admit I didn't soak any of the seeds the lupin seeds that my sister gave me and every single one germinated I'm sure they did she gave me normal lupins and then she gave me some and they are tree lupins oh they are quite yeah quite a thick seed Oh, I've got 30 seeds here. So I'll put them in there. There we go. So there we go. That was a very pleasant half hour. Um, so yes, if you know, you don't need a greenhouse to start seeds off. You don't need seed trays and everything. You can just use this kind of thing. Um, and if you've got a nice uh, light windowsill or a porch or any, any place where you can put your seeds down and you know you can just leave them there for months, um, then have a go because it really i love planting seeds i love watching them germinate it's very exciting they smell gorgeous very life affirming um and i think the baby will love it as well when he comes my little grandson um but he might be looking for these these sticks this time he might find someone have a bit poke around with them so I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, very warm welcome. Um, I hope you've found it useful and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye.